Luke 15, we'll begin reading verse 11. The Bible said, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him to his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have, I, have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good spirit of God in the house of God tonight. Thank you for thy people, Lord. And God, I pray that, Lord, you would meet with us now through the preaching of the word of God. Father, I pray you'd bless those working with the children on the other side and bless their efforts and uh, protect those precious little minds. May the word of God find a great lodging place in their heart. Take root. And those that have been saved, may they grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Those that haven't been saved, Lord, when they reach the age of accountability, show them their lost condition. And God, save them at a young age and save them from a lot of heartache and a lot of despair and then father I do pray for these in the sanctuary tonight Lord if there's somebody amongst us unsaved I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation but I do pray for the saints of God stir in our hearts a fire that's been shut up in our bones that God do something in our midst tonight that will propel us uh, to be a light to this lost and dark world. Uh, God, do something in our hearts that would cause us to live above the rudiments of this world. Uh, give us a greater desire to walk with you and God, uh, uh, embrace you like we never have before. Enhance our relationship with you. And Father, we'll fa not fail to bow these unworthy heads and thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us. Now use this unworthy vessel glorify your name we'll thank you for it for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things amen amen this this chapter the Lord Jesus deals with lost things we find at the beginning of the chapter he deals with the lost sheep and only the Lord would leave 99 and go and hunt for the one that's lost uh, my dear friend I don't know where he found you but I promise you this you didn't find him he came looking for you uh, and he brought you into the fold. What a blessing. Uh, then we find uh, 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 the story about the woman and the lost silver. Uh, how she'd lost some money and that's all she had. Uh, and how she swept the house and looked and searched diligently for it. Uh, and what a blessing. Uh, uh, the Lord allows the Holy Ghost to sweep our house uh, 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 so we can look diligently for him and what he wants to do in our lives and that necessity of him that we need in our life. And then in this uh, 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 text uh, he deals with the lost son uh, 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 in this lost son uh, 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 he uh, was in a far country and he was uh, joined himself with a citizen of that country in other words became a slave uh, out of somebody else uh, 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 and he would have ate what the uh, swine ate and friend I, I'll be honest with you I've never been to a place where I was willing to be satisfied with what swine eat but this fellow was brought low and so he could remember how good he had it at the father's house. Now this whole story about the prodigal son, the real emphasis 
should be placed on the father, Amen. not the son. We call it the prodigal son story, and everybody deals with this son, but the real emphasis is on the father. Uh, uh, first of all, he gave to that boy what that boy did not deserve. If you knew anything about uh, uh, Jewish law, uh, uh, the elder son's what got all the inheritance. He's the younger son. But if you look over there in verse number 12, it says, And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. Now look at this verse right, this clause right here. And he divided unto them his living. Now we spent a lot of time on the prodigal. We also spent a lot of time on that elder son. But he gave that elder son what he didn't deserve either. Because the father wasn't dead. No, but he divided unto them their portion of his living. You see, uh, uh, that younger son, the father gave him what he didn't deserve. And how many times do we see the younger child get extra blessings that they don't deserve? Yeah. Seth, let's just be honest. <laughs> Owen gets away with stuff you used to get beat over. I've seen it. Because... <laughs> He's mama's little baby. <laughs> she didn't even say amen. <laughs> huh? It seems like mom and dad have to experiment on the oldest. And by the time the youngest comes along, they're either wore out or they don't care anymore. Huh? What are you amening you for? You got it, you got it about, you was spoiled right until Owen came along. Then you got cut off, huh? <laughs> yeah, done. And Chloe never did get spoiled. She's always been mean. But listen, the father gave that boy what he didn't deserve. Right. Amen. Can I say something else about the father? The father maintained the home while the boy was away. The father could have simply said, you know what, I've done give the boys all my living, but let me go ahead and just sell this place. Uh, I'm going to move on down the road, get me a condo on the beach, uh, not worry about it anymore. Uh, but no, that father maintained the household. Uh, now I don't know how big it was, but he had servants. Uh, and he had to make certain he took care of the servants. Uh, and he had the elder son still there. Uh, we don't know if there was a mama still involved. Uh, uh, she may have passed away or she may have been involved. We don't know how big a household. Uh, but this father made certain uh, when that boy came back that same road he left on, uh, there was still a home to come to. Uh, aren't you glad? Hallelujah. God still maintains things uh, even when we're not concerned about what God's doing. Uh, uh, so when we do come to ourselves, uh, God's sitting there with arms wide open ready to receive us back home. Uh, I'm glad when we don't maintain, He still does. Amen. Something else about the Father. The Father forgave the Son when He came home. Uh, if you never heard Brother Mike preach that message on the prodigal son, whoa, what a message. See, that son should have been stoned for the life he lived when he left the father's house. He went out and he wasted everything the father gave him. He lived a riotous life. Uh, he joined himself as a slave uh, uh, to a citizen of a foreign land. Uh, he's out there wallowing with the hogs. The worst place uh, a Jew boy could have ever been was amongst the swine. Uh, but when he was there, uh, he got to thinking even the servants back of my father's house got it better and I got it here. Uh, I'm going to go and repent. Uh, ask my father to forgive me. Uh, and when the boy came uh, uh, down that road leading home. Uh, uh, the father looks up and sees him. Uh, he says, you know what? That boy kind of walks like my boy. Uh, that boy kind of looks like my boy. Uh, that is my boy. Uh, and the father didn't wait till he got to the porch. Uh, uh, the father didn't tell him to go get the hog swine smell off of him. Uh, uh, the father didn't uh, uh, rebuke him. Uh, uh, the father ran uh, and fell on him uh, and he kissed him. Uh, uh, the boy's trying to repent and the father didn't hear a word of it because uh, that boy had the father's heart uh, and the father uh, I love that boy and forgave him when he came home can I say the reason he fell on him 
Because if faith's going to stone that boy, they're going to have to hit the father first. Right. Can I say, no matter what the devil throws at us, I'm glad I'm in Jesus' hand and Jesus' hand's in the father's hand. And if anything gets to me, it's got to come through the father. That's right. Amen. So the story's really about the father. But I want to focus on verse number 11. Verse number 11 is a real profound verse. And he said, Jesus said, a certain man had two sons. I had to preach on this little thought this morning. I preached this, or this evening. This morning I preached on tis the season. Tonight I want to look at verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And I want to preach on, do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Now again, the Bible says, and he said, a certain man had two sons. Do you see what I see? I want to preach on what I see out of that verse. I see three sons. You say, preacher, are you blind? No. But I want to preach on the three sons. Can I say, first of all, there's the selfish son. That's the younger son. Hmm? Uh, can I say he's spoiled, like Owen? So I'm saying all this because Owen's back over on the other side. He's not hearing any of this. Uh, but the way he watches YouTube, he'll probably watch it tomorrow. Uh, I don't want to hear it. There's my youngest right there. She's spoiled rotten. She's so spoiled, she's regretting Ella getting here because she realized she won't be the favorite no more. Huh? The youngest is always spoiled rotten. Hmm? We find, uh, David's shaking his head, you know, Amanda's spoiled rotten, isn't she? Yeah, huh? He's spoiled. He hasn't been raised the same way the oldest one was. You see, the older one was raised to not ask the father for an inheritance. This boy had no bones asking for the inheritance. Jordan wouldn't dare ask for the keys to my Corvette, but she has. I was away somewhere preaching a meeting. She calls, Dad, how's the meeting going? Well, it's going pretty good. Good. Can I drive your car? And what was my response? Yeah, emphatically, no. That was the end of the conversation. There wasn't no debate, wasn't nothing. You see, I'm not like the father in this deal right here. huh? <laughs> uh, he's spoiled. Can I say something else about him? He's stubborn. Selfish sons are always stubborn. They're always spoiled. It's always about them. Can I say the essence of sin is my right to my claim to myself? Right. Selfishness is the essence of sin. And this boy proves it out. When he got out there, he didn't take the money and invest it in property. Uh, he didn't build something for the glory of God with the money. Uh, he didn't use that money uh, uh, to be a blessing to his father. Uh, no, he used it uh, on a riotous lifestyle. He lived as wicked as you could live. Because he's selfish. He thinks everybody owes him something. If there's anything wrong with this generation we've raised, it's a bunch of selfish people. Uh, we got a generation don't want to work. I told you all not long ago, Miss Nett sees these young kids, uh, 18, 19 years old, ask them if they're going to college. No. Ask them if they're working. No. Well, what do you do? I play video games. Listen, it's not on them. It's on their sorry parents who didn't raise them right. Mom and dad didn't want to deal with them, so they put them in front of a TV with some video games. Now, ten years later, they wonder why they don't get out and get a job. Well, you didn't train them to work. You trained them to be lazy. Mm -hmm. This boy's spoiled. He's selfish. He's ruined. A lot of people ruined today. Can I say something else about him? He's seditious. He's rebellious. The Bible's still true, by the way. The Bible says, says if you... Spare the rod, you'll spoil the child. You can one, two, three, all you want to. 
And you ain't going to drive that rebellious spirit out of them. And listen, you can beat them till they're half dead, and that don't mean they're going to turn out right. You better love them. You better pray over them. You better try and raise them the Bible way. And listen, every now and then they've got a nice padded uh, 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 area on their backside that can uh, withstand a little bit of a, a, a whipping. But, uh, but most of the time, if you raise them right, uh, you can sit them down and talk to them and it'll break their heart that they've broken your heart. Right. Mm -mm. Amen. What can I say? Adam and Eve raised Cain and Abel exactly the same. One turned out loving God and doing right. One of them turned out wicked. You see, everybody's got a will. Amen. And you've got to learn how, what it takes to break that, kid, that child's will or you're going to raise a rebel. And this boy was a rebel. I mean, the audacity to ask his dad for an inheritance. The audacity to take that inheritance and go waste it. huh? And then the audacity to become a slave in a foreign land. Can you think of anything more degrading? That's what this boy was. He's the selfish son. And then I see a self-righteous son. Look with me down verse 25. Now we see the youngers come home. The dad said, kill the fatted calf. Uh, go get my robe. Uh, he said, get the best robe. That was the father's robe. I mean, he went and got the best robe, uh, put a ring on him, put shoes on his feet, uh, 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 said, we're going to have a time. We're going to have a celebration. Uh, my boy that was lost is found. Uh, uh, we're just going to live it up. Uh, and all of a sudden, the elder, the older brother, hears about it. Look at verse 25. Now his elder son was in the field. As he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things uh, meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. Now here's the older brother. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid uh, that I might make merry with my friends. Uh, but as soon as this thy son was come, uh, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, uh, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. Uh, and he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Uh, it was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this. Thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Here we got a self-righteous son. I don't find anywhere in here where this boy turned down the inheritance when the dad gave it to him. Now this boy didn't run off. He did stay at home. He did serve. He did help. But he's got a problem in his heart. Even though he stayed home, he's still envious of his little brother. You say, how do you know that? Because he kept up with him. He knew everything that boy had done. And notice what he does. He doesn't get excited that his, his wayward brothers come home, got right with the father, and got right with God. No, uh, he's upset that the youngers come home, uh, and he's upset uh, that the father hasn't made a big deal over him. And he's quick to point out, this is what your boy did. He's self-righteous. Can I say, any time you ever try to point out the wrong of somebody else to make yourself look better, you're self-righteous. Mm. There's none of, a, none of us worth the powder to take blow away. None of us are deserving of God's grace and God's mercy. But this boy, he has some problems. Can I say, first of all, he's haughty, he's prideful. Mm. Man, he should have been excited when he heard his brother come home. No, he got angry. He's prideful. Mm -hmm. You say, how do you know that? Because he said, you didn't ever give me a kid so I could make Mary as my, my, my friends. Did you notice what the father told him? He said, son, all that I have is thine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, if you're not careful, God will do a work in somebody's life. And folks will get excited about that. But you've been sitting here faithful for years and people aren't getting excited about you being faithful for years. And if you're not careful, you'll lose sight of the fact we are joint heirs to the throne of Christ. Everything Christ has, you have. Hmm? Uh, we're not rejoicing over the sin of the person that got right. 
We're rejoicing over the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that's restored them back to the faith. Right. And my dear friends, if you're faithful, you've got a reward they won't have. Good. Most likely they spent their reward out there with the hogs. They've lost rewards. Yes, they've gotten forgiveness, but those rewards aren't restored. Amen. Nowhere do we find that young man ever gets any more inheritance. Hmm. Yeah. This boy still had his inheritance, plus all the father had. Yeah. Don't ever look down your nose at somebody that gets right with God. You ought to rejoice. But he's haughty. He's prideful. Can I say something else? He's hateful. He's real bitter. Can I say there's nothing worse than being around somebody that's bitter? Hmm? Oh, hateful, nasty, foul spirit. Hmm? That's why when somebody comes like that, I said to him, Brother Josh, I said, go see Brother Josh. He's an assistant. Let him deal with it. Huh? I don't want to deal with no nasty, old, hateful. Really, Brother Brian, we don't have folks like that. You know what? I don't tolerate it. No. You know, none of us uh, should have an old, hateful, bitter spirit. Uh, if we got what we deserved, we'd be in hell. But he's bitter and hateful. Huh? There's no place for a child of God to have that kind of spirit. Huh? But yet there's some. Well, I've been around them. I've been around preachers that's hateful and nasty. You say, what do you do? I don't go back around them. That's what I do. I, don't, I, don't, I want somebody that uplifts me, somebody that encourages me, somebody that's a blessing to be around. Huh? Somebody like Brother Mustin, that guy's crazy. He'll lift you up. If you never met Charles Mustin, you you think Brother Mike's crazy. Brother Mike's the sane one in the bunch when, when Mustin's around. Huh? Well, but I don't want to be around somebody that lifts me up and encourages me. Sure. I don't want to be around the doggy downer. There's enough of that in the world. Right. I want some help. Well, this boy, he's hateful, he's bitter. But he's also hardened. He's so hardened he's unforgiving. We need to learn the joy in forgiveness. Not only having our sins forgiven, but to be able to forgive somebody else. The Lord told us we should forgive because God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. God help us to realize we didn't deserve God's forgiveness. And even though you may think they didn't deserve it, you ought to rejoice in the fact that God forgave them. And you ought to forgive them if they've done any wrong against you. Sure. Hmm? Because I guarantee you, if you do a little inventory in, the li in your life, you, can, you don't have to go back that far. And you find where you wasn't a pleasant person to somebody. Yeah. Hmm? Amen. Hmm, and they forgave you. You ought to be willing to forgive. So we see there's the selfish son, there's the self-righteous son. You said, preacher, I know that. That's the two sons. Where's the third one? I'm glad you asked. There's the sovereign son. Who's that one? That's the one telling the story. Yeah, right. Hmm? Yep. Huh? You find him in the first part of verse 11. And he said, that's him. Oh, yeah. That's the sovereign son. Right. That's Jesus. Amen. He's the son of God. Yep. And he's telling the story about those other two sons. So we uh, can find the example not to live like those fellas, but to live like him. Right. He's our example. Notice about the sovereign son. Can I say he's gracious? All three of these stories are stories about lost things that get found. And it's all about him finding lost folks and lost things. Yeah. And he's so gracious because he don't have to come where we are. He didn't have to forgive us. He didn't have to come and be born in a stable. He didn't have to come and be in this old sin-cursed world. Uh, he didn't have to leave the throne where the angels cry, Holy, 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 to come here where he'd be cursed uh, and spit upon uh, and mocked. Uh, he didn't have to go to the old rugged cross. Uh, he didn't have to shed his blood. Uh, he didn't have to lay down his life. Uh, he didn't have to get back up. Uh, he didn't have to leave us a Bible. Uh, he didn't have to find the church. Uh, he didn't have to uh, uh, let you realize you's lost. Uh, 
He didn't have to save you when you called on him. Uh, but because he's gracious, uh, he did all of that uh, and so much more. Uh, oh, what a son, uh, the darling son of God, uh, who's gracious uh, uh, and he's merciful uh, to you and I. We ought to bless his holy name. Amen. He's a gracious son. Did I say something else about him? He's glorious. Amen. He came full of truth and glory full of grace and glory full of hope and glory we desire to get to go to glory because of him he's a glorious son he's so glorious I told you this morning he's so glorious the first time his name was ever mentioned an angel had to do it He's so glorious uh, that God sent a host of angels let them shepherds know that he'd stepped on the scene. Uh, he's so glorious uh, uh, that when he went down in the water in Jordan uh, and came up, uh, uh, the voice of the Father was heard. Uh, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Uh, he's so glorious uh, that when he was received back up in the glory, uh, they struck up the angel man again uh, and they began to sing and they sang uh, for two Two thousand years uh, how glorious and how holy and how wonderful he is uh, he's so glorious he'll be the light of the city when we get to heaven Amen. he's not only gracious he's glorious but this sovereign son he's God he was God manifest in the flesh he was a God in the beginning of the creation that created everything that's ever been made He's the God that spoke the worlds into existence. He's the God that flung the stars out on nothing and told them to shine. Uh, he's the God uh, uh, that causes the sun to come up every morning uh, and the moon to shine at night. Uh, he's the God that calls for the storm clouds to come and give rain when we need rain uh, and give sunshine when we need sunshine. Uh, he's the God that causes the grass to grow, uh, uh, the trees to grow, uh, uh, fruit to bloom, uh, flowers to look pretty. Uh, He's the God, uh, hey, that works in your and I's life. Uh, he neither slumbers nor sleeps. Uh, he's always on guard watching out for you and I. Uh, he's the God, uh, hey, that uh, he gives us what we don't deserve uh, and he stays off things we do deserve. Uh, he's the great God that promised to come back uh, and he's a coming. Uh, he's the God uh, that forever will sing worthy is the Lamb too. Uh, he is God. God, hallelujah he is the real emphasis of every page of the Bible he's the sovereign son and friend as we've entered this holiday season and I hope you know I've kind of got on Christmas a little bit today I'm for Christmas I love it I love all the decorations. I love all the lights. I love the fat guy in the red suit. I love the red-nosed reindeer. I love the one that ran over Grandma. I love it all. I love it. My granddaddy, who was a preacher, man, he made a big deal over Christmas. A lot of Baptists wouldn't like him today. He even had the fat guy in the suit come up in the Christmas program and give kids great gifts. Because my granddaddy come up rough. My granddaddy, if they got a piece of candy or a piece of fruit at Christmas, that was a big deal. I mean, he come up through the Depression. He didn't see a birthday cake till he was 11 years old, and that's because he walked by a house and looked in the window and saw a girl blowing out the candles. He grew up with nothing. Grew up down in the coal mines down there in Kentucky. Didn't have anything. Was 40 years old before he got saved. He was tending bar on the west side of Cincinnati when he got saved. And can I say my granddaddy made a big deal about family and about Christmas. It was always a big deal. And he always wanted to make sure all the kids at church had something because he grew up without anything. And so uh, uh, people would always bring gifts and you'd just mark on a boy or girl and he'd have somebody fat that would dress up in a suit and, and give out gifts to the boys and girls at church in the Christmas program. 
I always made sure after the end of the program, uh, 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 folks would get a treat. There'd always be an apple, an orange, a, a, a candy cane, and some of the old hard candies in there because he didn't want anybody to leave without having a Christmas present. Made a big deal about Christmas. Hey, that's filtered that does. We love Christmas. We love it at the foster household that we celebrate all month long. I mean, Christian's been trying to get us to give him gifts all year, uh, all month long. I mean, he's he, he's been he's been begging us to death. You know, when we gonna have Christmas? Christmas. No, when we gonna have Christmas? When we gonna open it up? When we gonna? Do? And then he got upset because you know Miss Ned had surgery. We didn't put up the big tree. He got upset. Well, I love the big tree. Well, get off your lazy carcass and come set it up, huh? He didn't like that idea. But hey, I love Christmas. But we put so much emphasis on all the junk that don't matter that it's lost its significance. I told you this morning, Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. If the date would have been important, God would have told us. What's important is that He came. And a lot of what goes on for Christmas is one of two things. It's either pagan or it's Catholic, which Catholic is basically pagan. Uh, And a lot of the traditions people have are all man-made or pagan. Uh, now, this busts some of your bubble. I can take care of it from Jeremiah and show you. They used to decorate trees and worship them. They decorated them with gold and silver. Your Christmas tree, your old Tannenbaum, old Tannenbaum, whatever the heck that means, that isn't about a Christian symbol. That is about a pagan tree that they worshipped. And that's where your Christmas tree come from. Do you find any Christmas trees at the manger? Nope. Huh? So it's pagan. Now listen, I'm not throwing off on you. You've got a tree. Normally we put up three. We only put up one this year. But I don't worship the tree. Right. If you worship the tree, you got a problem. Right. Yeah. Huh? Mm, can I say the wise men? I told you Jesus was probably two, for they showed up with the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. That's what God gave Joseph and Mary to help get them to Egypt. Yeah. Because Herod got jealous because the wise men didn't come back and tell him where they could find him. And so uh, uh, the slaughter, the innocence happened where Herod had every male child from a certain age and under slaughtered throughout the region because he would not have somebody else be king. But the Lord moved on Joseph Mary's heart to get down to Egypt. Hmm? How'd they get there with gold, frankincense, and myrrh? Uh, it's not real rocket science, but that didn't happen at the manger. Hmm? A lot of things that you uh, have come to believe, they're not any more factual than Frosty the Snowman. Okay? So don't accept tradition as Bible. The real emphasis of it all is where to worship Him. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. Why? Because God's Son came and made a way that you and I could be like Him one day. He that knew no sin became sin that you and I might be made the righteousness of God in Him. And so much emphasis is placed on tradition we've left out the most important Son that a lot of you didn't even see in this text. Do you see what I see? His name is Jesus. And all others pale in comparison to Him. So yeah, crank up your Christmas music. I love Oh Holy Night by Lee Greenwood about as good as any of them, huh? I don't know, that Carrie Underwood, she she can sing too. I like it. I like all the songs. I like the lights. I like it all. Have yourself a time. But put Jesus first in everything you do. Because if not, all you're dealing with is a dysfunctional family that had a godly father. Thank God for the son that most people never see. Because he's the one that brought it all together. My dear friends, is he really the Lord of your life? Does he have first place in your heart and life? Do you know him tonight? You don't know him. You don't even begin to know 
what Christmas is really about. It's not about the babe in the manger. It's about God manifest in the flesh that you can get a glorified body like him one day. It's about God righting what Adam and Eve wronged. It's about having a relationship with the one who created you. What a blessing. I wonder tonight, do you know him? If you know him, do you really know him? Do you see him? You ought to see him in everything that you do. You ought to see him on every page of the Bible. You ought to hear his voice daily. You ought to walk with him and talk with him. Do you know him? Oh, you can. And you can have a relationship so intimate with him that all others just don't even come close to what he means to your heart. This Christmas season, why don't you really put Christ back, not only in Christmas, in you. Why don't you let him truly be the Lord of your life? Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe tonight you need to just come and tell him you love him. Maybe tonight you need to come and tell him thank you. Maybe tonight you need to come and tell him you're sorry. Maybe tonight you need to go to somebody because you've had some bitter feelings against them. You need to go and ask them to forgive you. I don't know. But I know one thing. You want to have a great Christmas, you've got to put Christ first. And you can't put Christ first if you've got a bitter spirit. So maybe God's dealing with your heart about something. They're picking out a song. Folks are praying. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for uh, the illustrations that you use when you was on earth. That's just as timely today. And thank you for being the glorious, gracious, godly son, the son of God. Lord, we love you. We bless you for what you've done in our lives. Help people now. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.